Hey, and we're back. Long Night of Solace. So, for those who remember this, this was actually the demo for Halo Reach. There's that Scarab model that we never see in-game because... Pretty sure you never fight a Scarab. This time, her. You always pick her. Hmm. She's always had him dialed in. <laughs> that thing's crashing us and we're waiting for backup. They'll be backing up a graveyard. Our nukes are either out system or went down with the ships that carry them. You're preaching to the converted. How converted? I know that look, Kat. You can say no. No. <laughs> you don't even want to hear it? Fine, I'll hear it. Remember that accident a couple of years back? Colony ship in route to Cygnus, 700 dead. Vaguely a slip space drive malfunction, right? Actually, it worked fine. The drive was mounted improperly after a service haulout. When it fired, it teleported half the ship to oblivion. And this is relevant. How? A certain Covenant supercarrier could, with some assistance, suffer the same unfortunate accident. Even for you, Cat, that's... Inspired? Not the word I would use. What's going on? Go ahead, explain. May I? Don't cut yourself. Objective, destroy Covenant Carry and geosynchronous orbit above us. This sanction, sir, what do you think? Oh. Method, a slip space drive in lieu of the nukes we don't have. Delivery system, us. Solvable, getting us up there. That and getting our hands on a slip space drive. Thank you for sharing. So, all we need is orbit-capable transport and the single most expensive piece of equipment made by man. As a soldier in the field, I couldn't possibly have access to those kinds of resources. That said, a good place to look might be, I don't know, the nearest non-existent launch site in the non-existent Sabre program dismissed by three administrations as preposterous rumor, and in which our newest member was certainly never a pilot. It's scary. You know that. All we need is a green light from Holland. Mm, good luck with that. You're the one asking him. <laughs> Ugh, Nathan Drake Spartan is sad. Well, there's no way in hell he's going to go for this. And he went for it. Bit of a hike to the launch facility. Any closer? It's too hot to land. Copy that, Commander. Move up the beach, Noble. So, for those who haven't read the books, Slip Space is how faster than light travel is possible and how... Um, how, you know, humanity and the Covenant both have intergalactic well, not intergalactic, but interstellar travel. It's uh, possible via entering slip space. The cold protocol is a slip space specific... Whoa! Cleaned. Cold protocol is a slip space specific thing where people entering through slip space have to bounce back and forth in a couple places um, so the covenant does not see them uncloak and be like oh that's where they're heading here you can see the covenant using oh my voice is cracking yep maybe I shouldn't have recorded this one whatever we'll power through uh, here you can see the covenant using drop pods uh, just as the human ODSTs do and it's something that I really like where like, yeah, there's a lot of ways to go about a lot of different things, but in some cases, yeah. Sometimes there is just one way to do things. Like, in this universe, the one way to travel through uh, space faster than light is with slip space. So, everyone uses slip space. There's that dope track that we only hear 
like, a couple times. Get bodied. I will load that just for whoever has to use it next. You know, they're going to be stuck with the crappiest gun manufactured by humanity. They may as well at least have a full clip. Speaking of full clips. Now, I know that it doesn't work in any game where a grenade is a button, but I love how Half-Life handles grenades where you can pitch them or you can just kind of roll them along the floor. I love that. Anyway, so the thing that teleports uh, ships from space to space, fucking that up means that you cause either a massive explosion or teleport part of something. So we're going to get an extra one of those, put it onto the ship, and use it as a makeshift nuke. And you can see how fucked Reach is because they're using untested things. They're using untested tactics. They're using particularly stupid tactics that are cleared in about, you know, 10 minutes because, hey, this planet's about to get corrupted and destroyed and it's reach, it's important. I've never explained why. And it's because I don't remember. <laughs> uh, real sorry. Give me that. Hello, DMR Chan. But yeah, I don't remember why reach is so important. I just know that it is. Don't shoot the Spartans. You'll never hear the end of it. Oh, wait. I actually need one of these. Drop shield. The health that it gives is a little more useful than... <laughs> Sorry, I have to keep itching my face. Um, my beard has gotten so long and my microphone is so close to my face that I'm, uh, I am keep tickling myself. Give me that. I love when there's no animation for things. Just fresh gun drops out of me and a new one is in my hands already. Every time I see this, I think of a specific uh, thing in Halo 3 where you find a dude in a sort of position like this. I think he's even sitting against a wall, and there's a magnum next to him missing one bullet. And, you know, the message is clear, you know. Save the last one for yourself. So, do they have these ready, or did they scan it, like, today? Or is that interns rendering in soft image, like unpaid coffee uh, all the hell out hello that's Steve Bloom So sabers are a space plane. Six is known to be good at uh, flying them. I don't know why George rides with us. Maybe we're just good friends, but...
So this is a particularly annoying and long sequence while you while you play uh, legendary. So, this is one of those things where I'm just losing my mind over Bungie, because, like, this isn't, like, a ship that you can just, you know, get on in any mission. It's not like a Warthog where, like, you can insert them in, you know, pretty much half the missions that don't have them and they just fit right in. But yeah, this is essentially just a completely unique thing that only shows up in this level, and only for this long. And you fight, you know, Banshees, which you have seen, but you don't see the other enemies, if I remember correctly. And, like, not only is this a really interesting, like, game mechanic and control scheme and thing to do, it's also the best Star Fox game in years. And the only, for that matter. Considering that the last two Star Fox games were just remakes of Star Fox 64, which was kind of already a remake of Star Fox. And what's more, you even have two, uh, two weapons in this. So it's it's this when I really think about how much money is the UNSC burning on this, you know? How much money is this? $10,000 to fire this gun for 12 seconds, right? And I'm just shooting these in empty space where they'll either go nowhere or burn up in the atmosphere of some planet. Oh, good job, guys. Uh, of note, the ship actually has shields, which is pretty unusual and cool. So these work in the same way that um, the, you know, man portable rocket launcher works. Wherein it locks onto vehicles, but not onto other targets. But considering we're in space, it's not too big of a deal. They crashed into one another, no less. So in Legendary, it's very, very important to be able to, like, hot swap between your weapons. Use the good one for when it's good. In this, it just, you know, saves a couple seconds. So I was stuck here for probably an hour. I scream my ass raw, I'll tell you that. I mean, I didn't scream. I'm usually a little more in control of what's happening. All right, then. Sorry, I just basically mouthfucked my microphone. Not really, bro. Quick, put on more cliches. I need more dogfight cliches at 6 o'clock. 
I think it is six o'clock, by the way, in the morning. Um, I didn't go to bed. I will later, though. I'll take my medicine after this, probably. I might record Kenny Mobile thing. Yeah, I had this. I had this like. Wow. Well, I got him. And George, for that matter. Uh, I had this like incredibly nostalgic feeling while I was playing uh, Mission Three, wherein I was in an armchair because uh, my uh, recording setup is built around an armchair. Uh, the sun was coming up, and I was playing Halo Reach, and like, yeah, that was a, uh, that was the days, you know, and it is the days now, for that matter. Will you fall? Thank you. Jeez. My earbuds coming out. Oh boy. That was a fatal mistake. Please. Please. So of note, your hull integrity, a.k.a. you know, just your health, will also regenerate in addition to your shield. Ooh, that made my fucking balls bleed. That was a weird turn of phrase. Hip. I believe the uh, actual range of these is a little under uh, 900 meters. By the way, one of the most implausible things is the stasis that humanity gets into. Like, it's been 500 years. June said that... June describes the rifle's ammunition in effectiveness by yards. Are you kidding me, bro? If we're still in Imperial units by the year 2552, I'm going to kill myself. You know, assuming I'm alive and cognizant. I'd like to be. Oh boy, oh boy. I kind of biffed him a little bit there. That was uncomfortable. See, you have to be driving forward as you aim at something. You're completely unable to make any sort of evasive maneuvers while shooting. It leads to stuff like that. I mean, it'd be great if... George could help out, but, you know, he can't. You know, I'm thinking about how the humans still use yards for shit, and it's pissing me off. Like, one of the points of Halo is that uh, the Forerunners picked out humanity to be the successors. Spoiler, I know, but, you know, the Forerunners actually want humanity to lead the charge and be the next dudes. Because they are the only ones inventing new technology. Because, like, the, for, the Forerunners invented plasma weaponry, and then the Covenant is just ripping off the plasma weaponry by the Forerunners. The Forerunners. 
And then, like, the Brutes don't invent their own pl uh, plasma weapons or energy shielding. They just get given energy shielding by the Covenant. And so humans are, you know, the, the true successors because they're the only creative people in the galaxy. Because the elites are so stuck in their traditions and the Brutes are just dumb. Et cetera, et cetera. But humanity has not really evolved. The military present here is still the Tom Clancy, like, fictional military present in the 90s. And by that I mean the 1990s, because this is supposed to be, you know, 600 years after this, these cliches were really invented, you know? Like, this is largely just a, uh, you know, World War II, like, post-World War II era fictional military novel. This is so scary, by the way. I can't believe George does this. Look at that, he's just free floating. Night Sabadov Siva. Nova five, please repeat. Pull up service grid nineteen by twenty two. Gladly. Only sword plays, set to eighteen G. Verbal and hearts. Nova five, your heart is elevated. There is nothing you can do for Dr. Woolsey and the others inside sword plays. The mathematics are determinate. Noble 5? I know. Bravo, 290, you're cleared to re-engage thrusters. Noble 6, this is Holland. Go ahead, Colonel. We flagged a Corvette-class vessel on a predicted docking track with our target. Get our makeshift bomb on that Corvette, and we have our delivery system. Noble 5 will escort the bomb. I need your Sabre team to clear the way for boarding. Understood, Colonel. As she's already donated her slipspace drive to the cause, the Savannah will be joining you to provide local fire support. UNSC Savannah, our wings may be clipped, but we've got your back. I've stuck my neck out for Noble on this one, Lieutenant. We'll get it done, Colonel. Six out. I'd love to know what George says. I know very little about Hungarian. Although, if I remember, it uses the acrylic alphabet. We have visual. Target confirmed. Right. Go team. Gold five. This is George Lucas. Space dogfights are still just Star Wars. I'll be honest. Very near suicide attempt there. Don't mind me. Okay, I know it's just a gameplay thing, but there should not be the little, like, ee you get after... You get flashbanged in spades. Because the reason that that happens in video games is because you've just taken a hit to your earring, your hearing, or your ears, rather. And so you could a ringing in your ear because, you know, you've hurt your ear. But that does not happen in space because there is no sound. You know, there's actually a thing in Star Wars where they talk about that, why there's explosions in space. Um, Han Solo explains it to Luke in the book version of episode in what is episode 4 in the book version of A New Hope that is uh, but he says that the computer just auto generates explosions and engine sounds so your brain can calculate in three dimensions because on, on you know a planet in atmosphere you would be able to be like oh there's something behind me because I can hear it but in space you can't 
even though the computer can read in three dimensions. But that doesn't do you any good, so what you do is just make three-dimensional sound and generate fake shit. And, like, that's perfect, you know? It makes more sense than not having them. That said, it might not be what's going on here, but also in Star Wars. Let's thread this needle. Eh, you know? It's okay. Um... Will these guys stop talking? Jeez, Christ. So basically, yeah, we're letting everything ride on this mission. Pretty much all of Noble Team's in space. Oh, are you kidding me? That's not legal. Oh, boy. This is dumb. This shouldn't be allowed. Oh, man, really? All right, let's see if we can save quit. How do I resume? God damn you. How long have I been recording? Only 30 minutes. Only. You know, that's enough for an episode. Um, thanks for coming by, everyone. This, uh, this pissed me off, so I'm going to take a short break, and then I'm going to catch back up to wherever the hell I was. Um, thanks for coming by. This has been Alfred. This is Halo Reach.